In order to understand the derivative, we first have to understand slope, because the derivative is slope. So, I'm going to drive a car along a straight line, and over two hours, I am now at position 120 miles. So here's my t-axis, and here's my x-axis, which is x's position here. So I start off at time zero, position zero. After two hours, I am now at position 120. Well, I can find my average rate of change by finding the slope of the line between these two points. If I were to take a look at the slope of this line, slope is equal to my rise, which is 120 minus zero, over my run, which is two minus zero. And keep in mind that the unit of my rise is in terms of miles. And the unit of my run is in terms of hours. So when I find the slope between two of my positions, apparently I'm now in miles per hour. Isn't that interesting? The rate of change of position is velocity. Hmm. So here, the slope of this line, 120 over 2, this is 60 miles per hour. So over those two hours, I averaged a rate of change of 60 miles per hour. This leads to a very significant idea, which is that if you find the slope of a function, here we found two points, and the slope between these two points on position gave us the rate of change of position, miles per hour. In terms of physics, the rate of change of position apparently is velocity. Now, we're looking at a straight line here. We know how to find the slope of a straight line. That's no issue. And so if we have constant velocity, because my velocity here is 60, my velocity here is 60, here it's 60, here it's 60, because a straight line has constant slope. But what happens if we want to find the slope, but we don't have a straight line? For example, what if our function looks kind of freaky, like this? Well, we could still find the average rate of change and of course we can find the average rate of change from point A to point B by finding the slope from point A to point B. That's average rate of change. But what happens if I want to know the instantaneous rate of change? The rate of change at one particular infinitely small moment. Well then that means that I'm going to have to do something completely and entirely different. So let us set up what happens here. But if we want to find the slope at this value x right here, that really makes no sense at all. Mainly because to find slope, we have to have two points. And so if I drew some line, we call this a tangent line, 2x, See, this line right here is tangent because it hits the graph of f of x at this one point, x comma f of x, and the slope of this line is the slope of this function at this particular moment right here. It lies tangent to the graph. However, if you want to find the slope of this tangent line right here, we only have one point to go off of. And so if you want to find the slope between x comma f of x and x comma f of x, well, you're going to run into an issue because we have f of x minus f of x over x minus x. My rise here is zero. My run is zero because I'm finding the slope at one point, which means that my slope is zero over zero. And that is a major, major issue. How can I find the slope at this particular point 
if I need two points to find slope? Well, for this, we need calculus. And that is the whole idea behind the derivative. It is a way that we can find the slope of a function at one particular point x. So let's set this up. I'm going to create another point a little bit to the right of x. Let's call this x plus some distance h, where h is the difference between x and x plus h. If I go h to the right of x, I'll end up at x plus h. And now I can find the slope between these two points right here, pretty easily actually, because slope is equal to my y2 value, which is the function value at x plus h, minus my y1 value, which is the function value at x, all over x2, which is x plus h, minus x1, which is x. And of course, x minus x cancels out. And so my slope is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But this is the slope between two points, two different points, x and x plus h. Now, x plus h is some arbitrary point somewhere to the right or to the left, if h is negative, of x. What happens if I decrease h? Well, if I decrease h, then this x plus h gets closer. And that means that this tangent line gets even closer, or the secant line between x and x plus h. We call the line between two points a secant line. This secant line is now closer to what our tangent line was going to be. So let's make a picture of our tangent line to see how this secant line starts to approach. Here's the tangent line at x. By decreasing h, my secant line in turquoise is now getting closer to the slope of my tangent line. Before x plus h was over here, and the secant line was nowhere near the tangent line. But as I make x plus h a bit closer, this secant line is starting to approach our tangent line. What happens if I make x plus h get even closer, like right here? Well, we're now even closer, but still not quite. What will get me infinitely accurate to this tangent line? Well, if h approaches 0. If the distance between x and x plus h is 0, then they are essentially the same point. But how do you get this x plus h to approach x? Simple. By letting h approach 0. And as h approaches 0, that means that f of x plus h is now going to be approaching f of x. And this is the whole thing we wanted in the beginning, was we wanted to find the slope of a line at one point x. By allowing x plus h to approach x, we are therefore allowing the slope to approach one point. But how do you allow h to approach zero? Simple. With a limit. And we just talked about limits. So what we can do is we can take the limit as h approaches zero of our slope between H, uh, x plus h comma f of x plus h and x comma f of x and this right here is the definition of the derivative it is the slope between two points x plus h comma f of x plus h and x comma f of x 
is the slope between those two points. However, we are allowing h to approach zero, meaning that these two points are going to approach one point. And that right here is what the derivative is. The derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. It is the slope of the tangent line at any point x on some function f of x.